Okay, so great, okay. we're recording. Okay. This is Peter and Sharina. I'm okay. the presenter. Hi, Sharina. Yeah, Excuse hi. Me. And these guys are here because they turn on their webcams. Wow. So we also have here, we have Sharon, we have Nirmal, we have Deborah Healy, we have uh, Steve. That's me. Oh, sorry. I'm here twice. Okay. So welcome, everybody. Nice to see everybody. There's Deborah. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Okay. You sound uncharacteristically silent. I, I'm not uh, yes. <laughs> Good. Okay, nice to see you. So as I was telling people, you, you need to get ready to tweet something on the conference tag. You've already done it, Deborah. You, you've tweeted, uh, you, you posted on Facebook and you used the conference yeah. tag. So you're already there. So we're going to have a look at <laughs> that and come up in the aggregations. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I haven't started the share yet, so let me do that. So usually I talk to myself while I'm doing this, you know, the window, this icon here share so i usually talk to myself i used to work for a company that uh i was we were doing uh, uh speech recognition software and you're supposed to accustom the software to your voice by saying this is how i talk to my computer so when i said that i would say this is how i talk to my computer but anyway that's the normal way right you're all supposed to laugh okay anyway uh so to go to my presentation let me just get that thing running here and get back to the beginning so i was just paging through it whoa that's going the wrong way ah let me just control home maybe control home see what that does hmm. okay never mind there we go okay so back button back button back. all right uh this presentation is on uh, tag games how to use hashtags in professional and language development so basically, the thing is about how uh, how we have been using tags to get people collaborating and talking with one another through conferences. And the tag for this conference is the one that you see on the screen there, GloCal 2021. And so I'm going to ask you the workshop is the, all the, 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 the your mission. Uh, Shelly Terrell taught me how to use the word mission instead of task. So your mission today is to get a tweet or uh, it could be um, uh, a Facebook post or an Instagram post. You can get the instructions here. Th this slideshow is here. Uh, that's uh, bit.ly link slash glocal 2021 Vance. And that's supposed to be monotic, but of course I can never remember his Vance 2021 Glocal. But if you go to Vance 2021 Glocal, you'll get the write up to the presentation, which is here. And here you'll be able to link to uh, to the, the uh, slides. So the slides are the ones I've got up in that other window. So if you want to have these slides, you can, and or you can zap that QR code there, which I've put up as a little graphic in the next couple of slides and the recording my version of the recording will be up at learningtogether.net and there you see the pros write up and on the next page we're going to see your missions and there's something at the bottom that will show you the mission uh these are this is your mission it's on the next slide so i'll go ahead and show it to you on the slide so but you can you can find if you if you got the slides up you can review your mission by clicking there or ask me about it I think I've got a, I've got a text chat up here. Okay. Uh, let me just put something in the text chat. Okay. Text chat is working. Okay. So what I want you to do is to, wherever you post, bring up Twitter, Twitter account, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Those are those I have search tools for. Uh, could be anything, other places that will take tags. Sharina mentioned maybe LinkedIn. I don't know if LinkedIn works or not, but we won't be looking at LinkedIn unless you know how to go in and get uh, search tags in LinkedIn. And if you do, I'd like to know. So it's nice when, you, when you're when you posting, if you take a picture of something, but of course that's optional. Not everybody likes to do that, but if, uh, one, one way you can do it is you can get your, uh, your camera and you can turn around and take a selfie like that. Or you can just do a screenshot and uh, or take a picture of the, your surroundings or whatever and create a tweet or any kind of post 
and tag it. That's the essence. You got to tag it Glow, Glow Cal 2021 and then submit it. Okay, so that's your task. And if you need to see your task, you can go to that little link at the bottom and you can bring it back up again. Okay, so I, uh, yes. That's, there's a request to have a larger slide because, yeah, the slide is appearing. It's very small, yeah, in the screen. Yeah. Well, you can get the slides yourself. Oh, uh, okay, from the... Yeah, maybe you yeah. can share the link to get the slides here so the participants can. Yes, the uh, link yeah. is there in the QR code. And uh -huh. of course, we can go back and uh, share it. Let me just go back and uh, let's see if I just pop out of here and go back over here and I can get the link. And I'll just post that link in so many places. So you got to take that and put that all over the place. So we're on this slide right now. And that link will be, let's see, I'll just insert a text chat here, a text in here, and there we go. So um, just pull that in somewhere. There we are. So uh, if you can see that, then that will, it should, uh, okay, there we go. All right, there's the link. It's bit.ly slash glocal 2021. Uh, can someone, oh, let's see. Uh, I could possibly put it in the text chat here. Let me just put, paste it to the text chat. There we go. It's in the text chat now. And um, back to the presentation. So that's that's always the trouble with slide presentations, isn't it? You know, you you. Uh, so that's that's my full screen. I mean, that's full screen on on my. Uh, on my computer, it doesn't get any bigger than that. So, uh, unless a uh, actual slide presentation would actually take up the whole screen here, is that what happens? But anyway, you can get the slides. You can get the if you get the slides, you can click on the links yourself. So, to I've posted, I've been tweeting just to show you an example of what I want you to do, and if you. Put in Glocal 2021 in Twitter. I think you can see that, right? And I can actually make that bigger. Okay. Well, anyway, okay. I made it bigger on this computer, but not on that one. Okay. So um, I'll put it back the way it was so I can see it better. Okay. So this is, I've been tweeting uh, on that Glocal 2021. I was just talking to Sharina just now about how I was uh, displaying. This is what I'm presenting on right here. I can see the text chat. And, um, oh, you can't just click on, you. yeah, you click on the link in the text chat to access the slides. That's good. Okay, and I'm monitoring on another computer over here. So I was just showing her how I've got this set up. And uh, what I do at conferences is I tweet things that I attend. So um, I listen to, a, a, I started a workshop on gaming today and I tweeted that. So uh, that's that's what I was doing. So if you get a lot of people doing this, then you get a, a, an overview of the conference showing up in Twitter. And I'll show you how that works by giving an example of Glocal 2019. And here's the opening ceremony. I, I tweeted that, so it's there. And this is what I did yesterday. I tweeted uh, just to get this thing seated. That was my first tweet. So if you do a search on... Twitter, it by default takes you to the top posts and the top posts might leave out some posts. So I always use latest. So when I click on latest and I'd get the link, which I just highlighted something that says live there, that link, um, uh, that that's the link that you can see all the posts in order. It's the most useful one, I think, if you're following a conference. Top is you get the most viral if you want to get rid of stuff you're not interested in. Okay, so going back to the presentation, uh, you can also do this on Facebook, and you can search Facebook. Uh, there's the search tool on Facebook right there. And uh, Andy Tri-Nuyen is the only other person, except for Deborah, who has been tweeting with the, or he's been posting with the GloCal tag right there. And because he did this, um, Let's see, I'll open up the comments here. 
I don't know if you can see this, but I can just talk you through it. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's good bigger. Okay. All right. So this is in Vietnamese. And then uh, I come in and say, thanks for using the tag. I'll be giving a workshop on this tomorrow. And I gave him a link to it. And he said, oh, my honor to join. So I hope I don't have Andy here. I'm not sure if he's here or not. I can't see all the participants. And I said I'd look for him there. But the really nice thing is, to illustrate this concept, is that Andy and I have become friends on Facebook. Okay, so this is how you expand your PLN, your personal learning network. And then I made posts also. Oh, last night I did a, uh, I recorded in Big Blue Button the presentation that I'm doing now. It's on YouTube. So if you wanted to see a complete recording right now and run through it really quickly, or if you want to catch it later before I get the this one up, then this is where it is. So you can see, and, and this is Deborah's uh, tag. Oh, she's right now. Here she is one minute ago. She posted that she's at GlowCal at Vance Stevens' talk on using tags. Yay, Deborah, go Deborah. All right. So uh, she's got the idea. So there are two other people besides me. And uh, I, I tweeted this back in July just to uh, get things started. So I'd have something in the in this tag feed. Let's go have a look on Instagram. Instagram is a special case. I'll explain that in a second. Um, so if you put in this tag, if you put that tag here on Instagram, you're going to find three posts. Who is this now? Let's see. This is a new one. It's me. Is it? Peter. All right, Peter. Yeah. Yay. All right. Well, we've got a crowd here that's really engaged. Okay. This is a, and you and that's the workshop. You've done it unless you want to tweet more, you know. So um Okay, that's good. Okay, so Instagram, Instagram has a little special case though. I'll just show it to you. So the tag that we want to use is uh, GlowCal 2021, but someone started a GlowCal 2021 Malaysia. The first person to tweet here tweeted on GlowCal 2021 Mar Malaysia. And that was, it looks like Mr. Keen. Keen, my team. Okay, so then that was, he did this, a long time ago, I, I don't see the date on this, but uh, he, uh, he he this was here when I started doing this. Now that's interesting because what's going on here? There's, there's two tags now. You know, before we had one, now there are two tags. Uh, let's let's see what's going on here. This, this is because we're we're in the world of taxonomies versus folksonomies. So. I've done some more explanation of this in a couple of different places. If you want, you can see that Google Doc of a presentation I gave in May 2021. And it, it puts what I was, it, that slide appears there. But actually, that slide comes from a, a presentation I did at an, ex, at an IATEFL conference in Exeter in 2008. And that original slideshow is here. There's all If you get the slide, you can see the original works. If you want to go back, if you're really into this. So what is a taxonomy? What's a folksonomy? I'm sure you're familiar with taxonomies. How many of you are familiar with uh, folksonomies? How, how many of you know what a folksonomy is? Okay, Peter says no, Sharina says no. Okay, you're about, Deborah, Deborah says yes. She's probably given plenaries on folksonomies. Okay, so anyway, um, a, good, a good example of a taxonomy is the Dewey Decimal System. So Mr. Dewey lived 100 years ago. I don't know if you knew that. But he he organized the world of libraries into I can't, 100, 1,000 things, any great groups of tens. Uh, so in each group, he made 10 things. So nowadays, if you go to a library, it works very well in libraries to use a Dewey Decimal System because you can find, you can organize things, you can find books everywhere. But librarians these days, have a lot of problems, you know, when uh, when they come up with a book on the metaverse, where do they put that, you know? Or religions, uh, religions, I think, were kind of uh, Western-centric, uh, the way they're organized in the Dewey Decimal System. So uh, a lot of religions that many of us might follow are in the other religions category. So basically, there are six things here. I'll just go run through, uh, doing it in clockwise fashion here. Taxonomies are top-down. Folksonomies are where people make up the taxonomy as they go along. And it's a folksonomy because just in the example of the uh, someone on Instagram posting, thinking, well, the tag should be uh, GlowCal 
2021 Malaysia. That's a nice logical idea. But, you know, if you have everybody making up their own folksonomy, own, own tag, then you're going to get a very dilute tag stream. So it really behooves conference organizers to establish that tag right from the start. And also, if you're going to set up a tag, you need to search on it. What do you think? If you search on your tag, should you get a lot of hits or other end of the scale, no hits? Lots, no hits. Which, which do you think? Okay, the answer is no, no hits. You shouldn't get any hits because you don't want anybody to have that tag. Otherwise, your their results are going to end up with yours. So uh, that's how you set up a tag. You search it first, and then you make sure there's nobody else is using it. It's your tag, and then uh, you start using that one, and you have to tell everybody that that's your tag. Otherwise, they're going to invent their own tags because this is folksonomy, folks. Okay, so. Uh, client, uh, the taxonomies are client server. They, they envisage networks as being there's somebody at the top, something at the top, and the clients use it. Uh, folksonomies are peer to peer, that is, it's, it networks people equally. Uh, taxonomies are structured information dissemination, and folksonomies are ad hoc, so they're not, they're not really set into anything, they're just what people use. Something goes viral after a while, they're kind of like a uh, coronavirus. Uh, they, they they just adapt to, you know, the one that, that gets the most hits is the one that emerges. They're creative. Uh, can you see? Yeah, yeah, you can see my mouse there. They're creative, comprehensive, and adaptable because they come, they're, they're, if someone wants to get metaverse into the folksonomy, it's easy to do. You just start tagging metaverse in, a, in the library, no telling what happens to the books on the metaverse. Uh, and taxonomies tend to be inflexible. Folksonomies are unpredictable. So here I'm, I've got a, a presentation on using GloCal 2021 as the tag, and along comes GloCal 2021 Malaysia. Okay, so well, that, I didn't predict that. I just discovered it. They're sloppy. Okay, uh, taxonomies are predictable and precise. If that's really what you want, that's a good way to organize your file cabinet, maybe. But if you could somehow tag things in your file cabinet, like on your computer, if you put your files on your computer and tag them, and you can go back and find things without them having to be in a particular place in the file cabinet. Okay, so got that concept? Let's have a look at how this happens in practice. So at WorldCal in 2018, I'm coming to, I'm gonna to come to GloCal 2019 in a minute. But in 2018, we had a case where it was a little hard to determine uh, what the tag was. And we kind of talked about it when we all came to the conference because there were a lot of people tagging there. So um, let's see. I've got the latest tweets here. This is, um, let's see if I can get down to the bottom here. Yes, I got to the bottom. No, no. Okay. Well, maybe here. Here we go. Here's Gary Moderum's tweet. He has just come back from WorldCal 2018, and he's and he's using WorldCal 5 also because it was one of the uh, tweets used, one of the tags used. So one way to get the tags to um, uh, to work is you, um, you use all the tags, but then that fills up your tweet feed. So here's here's one that I uh, I gave a presentation there, and I tagged at WorldCal 2018 and WorldCal 5 because people were using it, so I wanted to cover all my bases. And there's Mark Pegram. He came to my uh, presentation in Chile. It was in Concepcion, Chile. And I will be at his presentation following mine. Can't wait. Um, so when people arrive at conferences, let's see if I can get way down here. Yes, I think I'm coming down. A little, no, I'm not. This is too long. Okay, anyway. Uh, all right, so I guess I'll give up on that. It's just going to take too much time. I should have queued it beforehand. But this is basically what, what you can see in a conference where people are tweeting. You see a lot of people tweeting. Um, Carol Chappelle gave a, a, a an online presentation there. Um, Jake uh, Sake Yager, probably, I'm sure. I did. Okay, so people are tweeting on, on that. Let me just pop up a little bit. Um, Glocal is, oh, she's about to start, so she's tweeting her presentation. This is on November 17th, 
might have been the same time that I was in my presentation. So here we get, if you follow a tweet feed like this, you get to see what's happening in other sessions. And people sometimes produce useful links. So I don't really see the time here, but these could have been simultaneous sessions. There's Tom Robb. He's, uh, he's doing a, uh, that was the presentation after mine. So I went over there after uh, my presentation and uh, he was he was giving a presentation where they had invited people from uh, to uh, give them a grant to bring them to world call and they had to give a presentation there so these are some of the people at that presentation and um, let's see I, there's tom again okay um all right so anyway Okay, uh, that just gives you an idea of what, uh, how tags can be used at conferences. Digo to store bookmarks. Yes, I used to use Digo, and Digo still sends me emails. I don't really use it all that much, but, uh, but of course, Digo was similar to, uh, what was the other one? Delicious. And um, that, that, that was, I used to organize my world on Delicious as well. Oh no, I've got some uh, something going on, some work going on in another room. Okay, let's look at what we did in Da Nang. And in Da Nang, Da Nang, here's an interesting thing right here. I, I might just try to get down to the bottom of this. This isn't, this one isn't so long. Oh yeah, this is gonna be better. Okay, so, oh, maybe not, I don't know. Okay, so if I pull this down, hmm. Okay, this is the beginning. Okay, that was easy to find the beginning of. All right, so um, this is someone in November tweeting, the conference was in, uh, in uh, remember, when did we start? July, yeah. Okay, so he tweeted on that tag, Glocal 2019, uh, the conference link, and then uh, Ken Lee tweeted, more they're about we're about oh we're gonna get there in august okay east edo Forsyth has his visa now this is in august i'm at the conference with my wife i decided i'm gonna post a picture while i'm there edo has arrived at the conference um cynthia white is presenting on the first day tom rob is ubiquitous and um karen price was there we might have a look at her presentation in a minute um, so anyhow, so people are, people are there, uh, there's Eric Hagley, and we all know him, and Ido is present, uh, is posting there. Ido is posting, I'm looking now at the posters, me, Ido, the cultural performances at the beginning, so Ido, Vance, Ido, come on, let's get some other people in here. Okay, so Ido is, Ido and I are holding up the whole thing, we're just supporting this tweet feed, but we're starting to get into the conference now, and um, nobody yet. Oh, come on. Okay, so maybe I'll just have pop way up here. Let's see. No, this is going to scroll through it, because you can see uh, that we're, we're making a record of the conference. So you can see that all the events that are taking on through the eyes of Edo and I, and uh, that's on 2019. There's also another tag they might have been using. No, it's just Edo and I. I didn't realize we were doing all the tweeting here. Well, I'm getting up to the top. Okay, Claire. Claire is here now. She's taken. Uh, she's she's got the idea. On the 10th of August, she's tweeting uh, Karen's uh, plenary, which was one of the last events of the conference. And uh, at that last event. Oh, by the way, when I tweeted, I gave some links to her presentation. Um, some of the things that she used it, used was Quilliams. I don't know if anybody's heard of Quilliams, but anyway, you can find this link there. So we put up a Nearpod, and Nearpod, they use it kind of like Padlet, and they put some questions up in Padlet. And I posted, though, oh, oh here, this is from uh, Susan Stamper. She suggested something called Answer Garden in her presentation. Let's pop here because, um, let's see, Answer Garden. So let's go there. 
Now, if you went to that link in the Twitter feed, Susan Stampers, you can type in uh, your impression of what you think about Glowcall and submit it. You can still do this. So if you wanted, you could do this. Maybe we could put that link in the, let's put the link here in the, uh, in the text chat. Okay. You can try it. Go to Answer Garden and see if you can fill in Susan's Answer Garden. Where are we now? Okay, we're here. All right, there we are. So, yeah, if you want, you can go and uh, fill in some words about what you think GlobeCal would be like. Now, I, this might be a screenshot. Uh, I'm not really sure, but we do have it live here. So, um, anyway, if anybody puts in, we can, we can check it every now and then. We'll be checking some other, the tweet feeds again, just to see what, what's going on in the workshop. So, sorry, this is the second task in the workshop that I really hadn't anticipated. Okay, so um, let's see what I did. Here we go. So this is this is a someone put up. Um, they wanted comments, questions in the Nearpod, and I wrote. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but that's okay. I'll read it to you. Relatively few attendees are posting to the Twitter tag Glocal 2019. What do you think would be a more appropriate or current app for back channel conversations at Glocal 2020? And I even tagged this one Glocal 2020. And if you go to that tag, that's the only thing that appears in Glocal 2020. So trying to get more people to tweet um, that question. Another guy, Mr. Min English, and I think I, I think he, I went to his presentation and I had his picture in there. He uh, he saw that and he answered my question. Oh, oh, as, let's see. I forgot to put in it. Uh, oh, yes, here it is. Um, I also at that presentation said a big thanks to the organizers of Glocal 19 and a question. It was announced that the, that the conference would be streamed to YouTube. Is there a channel where we can see the videos? Looking forward to see you in KL in 2020 or 2021, as it turns out. Okay, so is there a channel to see the videos? Well, Mr. Min English, who's, you can see him there, answered. And he, uh, he replied either to me or, he, anyway, he replied. And he said he found these videos on the school's Facebook page. They're not public, though. Well, okay, uh, let's have a look. Okay, so this one, this is his tweet, by the way. So if I click there, I get his tweet. And he tweeted these videos. And I, I wouldn't have found these videos except that I use Twitter. And Mr. Min English, uh, let's see now. I think, can you hear this? This is Karen's presentation. Can you hear it? Let me check my monitor over here. Little yes. dots on the screen that come yes, up in our AR workshop is because it's it's actually so now, it's tagging that. It says I see the building and now I can recognize it. Okay. So object recognition, let me show you something here. I'll let Karen talk for a minute. This particular video here. Ah, she's showing, it's, it's translating the objects into uh, into Spanish. Okay, so one thing I like about this particular presentation, not only that you can see you, uh, Karen's uh, presentation on artificial intelligence uh, is recorded. That's really nice. I really, you'll, you'll just be fascinated if you get back into this. <laughs> There's Karen giving the presentation. Where's the interaction? Just to be able to name something, it is like a magic show. Okay, I don't really have to show you all this because uh, if you go to the tweet feed, you can find it yourself. It's right there at the top. Oh, sorry, that's the World Cal one. So if you go to the tweet feed for, um, for Glocal 2019, it's right at the top. You can replay those videos. What a treasure. Um, so back to that video, Let's see, where did I have it? I think I had Mr. Min's tweet. So 
one thing about it, it's not only, well, let me go to the first one. I like the first, the first presentation. This is the first one, the opening ceremony. Uh, okay, this is beginning. So you can see the, uh, you can see who's in the audience and some of them start out with more sparse audiences. I think that's Mark Siskin right there. Anyway, okay, so uh, let me just pull it forward a little bit. Okay, let's see. Oh, there's a, an opening speech. Looks like it might be Sumi. I'm not really sure. No, it's, uh, yeah. I can't hear it either. I don't, okay. Uh, let me see. Pull it forward some, and we'll come into a culture, culture performance. Or maybe not. Maybe it's a different one. Okay, anyway, this, this is the plenary. There's, so what does Mark have to say? Okay. Uh, this is going to be a little bit probably not so great on the video. Okay, well, this is the one speaker setting up. But anyway, if you want to go there and see it yourself, you can see the, uh, the videos and replay some of the conference. Okay, so... Any questions? Spoken or text? Okay, this is my, I'm going to work, I'm going to come into, oh, I'm listening to myself echoing over here. Okay, I'm going to move into tag games in the classroom, how, how you can use these with students. And the way, since I don't have students right now, the way I do them right now is I give workshops and uh, try the techniques out on teachers. So I get them to do what I would ask students to do. But uh, in, uh, I, I, I noticed that in the, in the presentation where I talked about folksonomies and taxonomies, I was asked at the end of that presentation how tags could be used practically in the classroom. And that, it's hard to say how you use tools like this in the classroom. Uh, it depends on the inventiveness of the teacher. If you see an opportunity uh, and you want to collect student feedback or you maybe send the students out on to different points of the campus or have them do something. Well, I mean, it's great for COVID, isn't it? Because they're everywhere. So you could have them tweeting what they're doing, showing you pictures. Uh, there's a the Australians have a virtual, uh, sorry, a, a vocational, uh, vocational education thread because they're such a big country. They have, you know, if they're teaching technical skills from a university in one place and they want to reach someone in the outback, then that person might put on some uh, glasses or point of view stuff and show them how they're doing their welds. So they, so this is the kind of thing you could use Twitter for, or you can also pull this into a Moodle or something like that. But uh, if, if, you, if a teacher can recognize that a learning situation calls for this kind of thing, then this is a tool that, that's very handy. I like Twitter. Twitter's, Twitter's the best one for me because it comes pretty instantaneously. Uh, it doesn't even matter if you use Twitter a lot. I don't use Twitter that much in my daily life, but I use it for these situations. So uh, I, have an, I have examples of how I've used this uh, before we shut things down for COVID in January, 2020. In Malaysia, we shut down in March. I haven't been out of the country since. Um, so in 2020, I gave some workshops in Thailand uh, as an English language specialist and uh, I, I left a web page for them, and I went to several different campuses. Um, this, this, there was an E component afterwards. This is kind of set up for the E component right now. We'll go, we'll go over here to the sidebar and see that sidebar. Let's see if I moved it over. Okay, so the sidebar gives the different uh, workshops I gave, and I gave them day after day in different universities. So it would take me to different places in Thailand, and I would give the workshops over and over again. So it was always with a new group of people. And what I had them do, I had them aggregate. So I have in the sidebar, it says, and, and also in my slides, 
it says the aggregations are here. So if you use the slides, you click there. That will take you to where I just showed you in the sidebar. And this, these are the archives of what we did. So, for example, um, let's see, here's some uh, Chiang Rai University students. Uh, I made a, oh, I was showing them how to use Screencast-O-Matic, so I started recording what I was presenting, and I put that up on YouTube. Uh, I had them make Etherpads. I don't know if you know Etherpad, but um, it's a place, where, it's a space that you can set up and work on the fly. We'll see how that works in a minute, because uh, I was working there with Screencast-O-Matic, Google Forms, uh, Google Documents, um, Poll Everywhere. And I had them tweet or put on Facebook the things that they were doing. So if we go to the tweets, these are this is the one that says live on it is the one where you get all of them in alphabetical order. So this is this particular group of people. I don't know if you can see the tag, but it doesn't really matter. But for this tag, the workshop was on January 28th, and the name of the place was uh, Chiang Rai uh, University. So C R R U was its initial. So by having a special tag with a date and the initial of the place and having the participants use that tag in all the artifacts that they produced and then put online. Um, these are these are some of the tweets that they put up. So you can see that they they took pictures and this one says such a fantastic workshop. I really, I want to stress that that was a really a nice workshop because of the students, of course, they were really sweet. Uh, this is an advertisement. It's everything gets advertised these days, isn't it? You know, so um, let's see. I thought I had a, okay, someone liked it. Someone really must have liked what we did. Uh, okay, so someone, now what I asked them to do was make a ether pad and put up what they had done. So, uh, and I had an, an ether pad we used was uh, Wikimedia's ether pad. Ether pad has a long history, which I, I don't know, I really have time to go through it right now, but basically um, you, you want to find reliable ones and the Wikimedia one is reliable. So that one's been up a long time. So if you use it, try this one. So in Wikimedia, let's see, she posted, it looks like, I think I already know what she, it was. I think it's a link to a Google doc. Oh, no, this is what she posted. Okay, so let me try another one. Okay, so if I try this one. Okay. So anyway, she created it basically and she tweeted it. So we know its location so she can, we can see what she did. So once they've created these artifacts, whether there's compositions, I've used these in, with my classes and students um, because, you know, like I'll, I'll have them uh, see each other's compositions and they can, they can even work on each other's compositions. Uh, they're all editable. But let's see, this guy, what did he do? Um, okay, anyway, reached the link through Twitter. He re re we reached this link through Twitter. Okay, we did do that. Okay, so um, there's my sample either pad, Bobby's view of the audience, uh, Bobby's view of my presentation. Okay, so it looks like, what did we do here? Okay, this is the workshop. Okay, so uh, I think I, I got there from the aggreg aggregation. There we go, yes, okay. So maybe, uh, and this is what they did in Padlet. So another thing you can do with Twitter is if you want to give instructions, you can give instructions and they can go to the search tag and they can find your instructions right there. You can see it's a, a way to, um, to share information quickly. Here are some of the teachers. Uh, uh, let's see what they did. Let's see if, if anybody put anything on Facebook. So these are their tweets. The teachers at the same place, a different workshop. So they were, uh, their English was a little better. Maybe they could understand what we were doing. But we, basically they, they posted a few things as well and uh, posted links of what they're doing. So you get a, a nice, a nice uh, picture of what they're up to. Uh, let's see, it looks like I, those links don't open in new windows. So in Instagram, let's see if anybody did an Instagram on this day. No, no Instagram pictures on this day. Uh, okay. And uh, was that Facebook? Facebook? Yes. 
Facebook hashtag. Okay, so Bobby posted on Facebook. Bobby, you posted on Facebook. Okay, she's just showing people what we could do. So they weren't too much into Facebook on that day. But basically, if you want, you can go through all the uh, aggregations at this link at the bottom of this page if you want. And you can see what students were doing and how we were using it. So that just gives you an idea of how you could use this with your students in the classroom. Now, uh, one reason I was going through the Chile uh, World Cal 2018 was that Doris mentioned Doris at the present at the event that Tom Robb was organizing. Doris Morella was brought in from Argentina. She's originally from Venezuela. But she was brought in, then she had to move, and so she moved to Argentina, and she uh, hopped, hopped over the mountains and uh, mentioned in her presentation an appreciation for webheads and writing matrix, which is a project <clears throat> where teachers around the world were able to get their students to blog and then find each other's blogs through a tag writing matrix. Now, when we set this up, obviously we need to find, as I told you, a tag that no one else was using. So we did some research and we discovered that writing matrix was a cool one. That's what we were trying to do. We were trying to get teachers to um, to get their students blogging and then have their students find each other's blogs and then interact with each other. Isn't that what it's all about? So that's language, you know, that's using language communicatively and creatively. And um, the tool we use was called Technorati. Technorati still exists, but Technorati is, has become a corporate tool. What, it's, what Technorati was set up for was to explore dra uh, blogs for trending posts. So Technorati no longer works for uh, things like writing matrix, which get no hits whatsoever. Corporations aren't interested in those tags. So, but when Technorati was just developing, they were, you could actually search on a tag like that. You had to filter your tags to allow any, to, to, to allow like the latest instead of the top uh, filter in Twitter. You wanted to allow anything with that tag, even if it's only got one or two hits on that tag. So that's how the students found each other. They used Technorati searches to find each other's blogs. And we set up a, uh, it was actually a, a Wikispaces uh, site for it, but we ported it over to writing to uh, TV Works when, um, when Wikispaces closed down. And these are the people involved, Nel Nelda Quintana in Argentina and Rita Zainz there also in Argentina. And Doris, she was in Venezuela at the time and Sasha Sirk from uh, Slovenia. So all these teachers got their students to come together and uh, uh, communicate with each other, find each other online, make friends with each other, which is very important. And um, we also attracted other people. So uh, Carla Arena in Brazil uh, and the people where she was working at the time started just using that tag. They found out what we were doing and they started just going to, they didn't have to join it. You know, this is, this is not something you have to organize. This is peer to peer. It's not, client server. This is not something that you uh, that you have to say in advance, I'm starting this group up, would you like to join it? No, to join it, all you had to do is create a blog, blog post, tag it, or put category or whatever, however they set the tag, tag it writing matrix, and it was in the game. So, um, so this is, these are the people that we, we've done several presentations on writing matrix in uh, 2008, uh, a couple of them here are, are recorded, but this this one here, this one, it was actually uh, the project, well, the, the first presentation we did was for the K-12 online conference, which started in 2006. And it looks like we did this one in 2007. So we, we submitted this to the K-12 online conference. Now the K-12 online conference, I, they don't do it anymore, but it was one of the original K-12 online conferences. Uh, I've I've been involved in online conferences since 2005, when we did Webheads in Action Online Convergence, and I did that because I wanted to create a conference that anybody could join, and you didn't have to pay for it. And we ran it for 72 hours at a stretch, and we did it for three years: 2005, seven, and nine. In 2006, K to 12 Online wanted to do the same thing, so they 
a similar thing, but theirs had no synchronous presentations. They all did asynchronous. So you had to create a presentation. So I want to show you this presentation on writing matrix. It takes five minutes and I'm going to play it through. I might comment over it when there's a guitar going on, but um, I'll show it to you. Do we have any questions before I turn this on? Or if you want, you could ask questions during the presentation. I think this, this really explains, though, since it was done for a conference in five minutes, what writing matrix was all about. Ready? Yes, ready? Yeah. Shereen is nodding. Okay, all right. That's good enough. Can you hear it okay? Looking for friends, tagging man. Looking for friends, tagging man. This guy is from Argentina. He's cool. Rita had trouble getting the Argentina people, students, into this. They, why would we be interested in what's happening in Slovenia? You know? But once they got into it, they really got it. Looking for friends, tagging man. That's how you, that's how you find friends. Okay, so let's start. Well, welcome. This is... Uh... Um, EFL blogging in Venezuela, and we're going to be describing how we are participating in the Ready Matrix project. Okay, so Rita was in Rosario. Um, oh. Hi, everybody. We are a group of students from Rosario, Argentina. We are pleased to share our experience learning and studying. Use blogging as a very important tool to communicate and get to know people from other countries. Okay, we this is our joint map, you know, how you put your pin on this map and put in some details. So this was a map that showed where our participants came from. And Europe part of the map right now. That's Sasha from Slovenia who organized her students to do this. That's me when I had hair. Uh, I'm coordinating the Writing Matrix project, and our four teachers are redesigns there, Satsu Sir, Melba Quintana, and Doris Malero, who've been in the project from its outset back in the summer of 2007. And right now, Rita is going to tell us a little bit about her participation well, in this project. Well, I can tell you project. that I started so, this project with my students uh, in Rosario, um, in a private institution where I teach English as a foreign language. And I have found it a little bit difficult at the very beginning to motivate my students to post in the class blog I opened up for them. But then, uh, with the pass of time, uh, they took to it and they started enjoying participating, uh, realizing that they were going global and that through uh, blogging, they could reach many people in the cyberspace. And there's Doris. Barbara Dew, we call her B. Melba. We pull her to Melba, and there's Rita. Hello, my name is Melba Quintana. Today is the 22nd of September 2007. We are here at the School of Languages because it is its 14th anniversary. Some teachers are speaking about their uh, research work and project. I am going to speak about writing matrix project. I'm very happy because today I meet uh, Matia for the first time face to face. Matia is one of the participants of Web Matrix uh, project. Hello, Matias. Hello. My name is Matias. I'm a member of the Writing Matrix Project. And I meet Quintana and Eva Quintana in, in the East in Yahoo. Here's what they do in, uh, here's what they talk about, here's what they blog about in uh, Slovenia. <laughs> you can imagine when someone posts about this and people find it, and they comment on it, you know, so you can see it gets a uh, something interesting <laughs> well uh, so I experimentally opened the class block a few weeks before ending our course and I invited uh, my students to collaborate on it just to show them how it works how simple it is to use it and how far it can 
reach. Um, my uh, friends from Webhead in Action knew about this experiment and they dropped by to say hi from all the various places and they pleasantly surprised my students and me. Um, and uh, students seeing that uh, there is a real audience uh, everywhere out there um, and that it is uh, very easy to get connected. Okay, and that's it for that. Let's see now. How do I get rid of that? Okay, I close that okay, page. I think this one is going to be a little harder. Uh, when I click on this, the video starts again, unless I do it properly. Yeah, there we go. Okay, ah, I got it. Okay, now then, before I go off into the close, let's have a look at some of the places. Let's see if anybody's in the workshop besides Deborah and Peter and. Um, and sure, no, anyway, no, I'm not sure. Anyway, how I, I forget who. So let, let me go back into the spaces that we have and just check them. So, oh, uh, this is not the one I want. This one uh, posted on Instagram, uh, Glocal 2019. Actually, I want to tag there. Okay, so tag Glocal 2019. Let's see what, what has appeared there. I know that we have. Glocal 2019, ah, 2021, what am I talking about? Okay, there we go, Glocal 2021, let's see, no, still, just Peter, me, and Andy. Okay, and then let's just check the uh, the other one, Malaysia, no change there, okay. Uh, Facebook, uh, let's see, if I search Facebook for, I think I'm already in the, in the 2021. So let me just refresh and see if anybody is posted there. Okay. And I thought Deborah, yeah, Deborah had the other one there. Okay. So, and then the other place to check is Twitter. And if we go to Locale 21. Okay. And I don't see anything that's really been added here today, but then people don't necessarily use Twitter. Well, let's check, uh, you know, the last time I did this, I realized there was another tag. So that's the one that says Malaysia on it. One can always hope. It's defaulted me to the top. I want the latest posts. Sometimes it leaves out some of the posts. Okay, so only one post. Doesn't matter. I'm not disappointed. I really appreciate your attention here. And um, basically, we'll know if you found the session valuable when we find your posts tagged Glocal 2021. Okay, are you trying to speak, Sharina? Yeah, <laughs> it's my first time uh, venturing, you know, uh, using tag to communicate and all that. So I haven't figured out how to do posts and all that. So I will try to post something by tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So your, your session has been, yeah, very interesting. It's an eye opener for me. Yeah. Good. Where you can use tech, you know, to communicate and also, you know, to recall memories and all that. So it's like something new for me. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. And you know, another thing that I forgot to mention is when you're actually in a physical conference, let's say you're in uh, WorldCal 20, 18 or your Glocal 2019, and you post a tweet from what you're seeing right there. And you check to see if it's posted. Yeah, it's posted. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's someone else posted the same presentation. And that person, as you can see here, let me just pop out. We get into Twitter. See, the person has a, uh, um, a picture. Well, anyway, they'll have, well, everyone has an icon. So uh, you'll see, you'll look around the room and you'll find the well, that icon matches that person who's looking at me, okay? So, ELN, you're coming together, you know, you're meeting people. Uh, yeah. You tend to oh. aggregate, you tend to come together during these conferences, during these, oh. uh, these events. Okay. 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 So, okay, I, I'm just going to oh. wrap up here. And uh, just to remind you, there's a prose presentation here. And there's just one more thing. I did a dress rehearsal last night for this presentation. That's its link. And there's one more slide that I added accordingly. 
So if you want to see the presentation again before we're able to post this one, or before this one becomes available, or you want to see a different version slightly or whatever. Anyway, it's up there on YouTube already. You could have just watched that and forgot about coming here. But anyhow, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Rance, for the yeah, interesting session. Yeah, and personally for me, it's an eye-opening session. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, thanks, very I, interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for thanks for playing the game. The tag <laughs> game. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. It does work. Right. It works really well.